Hello and welcome back to Tungsten Tales. We have our first new tour card holders of the year, Kirk Shepard and Gert DeVos. We'll be returning to the PDC tour, well in Kirk Shepard's case returning, Gert DeVos making his first appearance as a full-time professional in the 128 players on the tour. Coming through some extremely tough games uh, and we've seen some Big, big names crash out on the open day. Stay tuned to find out who they are. But we have to take you through the winners, first of all. And that first player we will take you through is Gert DeVos. So if I just quickly go into Dark Connect, into the European Q School. Uh, Gert DeVos. We've seen him in the BDO World Championships. We've seen him in the Grand Slam with one of the highest averages ever in the Grand Slam of darts. Maybe ever in TV darts non-stop. Um... We've seen him all over the place, but not so much in the last couple of years. But he has returned with a bang, and he's back on the he is on the tour for the first time. Not back on the tour, um, and he came through some absolutely stunning ties. He was never actually pushed to a final deciding leg this time around, but uh, a six-two win over Jerry Hendricks, and then six-nil over Patrick Kovac, who's a, a very very capable player himself. Um, Stephen Nostin, Mikael Unterbuchner, a, uh, a, a former, well, former Grand Slam quarter finalist, former BDO World Championship semi finalist, a top player in Mikael Unterbuchner. Then defeating Richard Vainster, another top player, one you'd expect to get through this year in Q School. Lorenzo Pronk, one of the surprise packages of today and of Q School overall. And then defeating Gert Nenches in the final, another. Former tour card holder, 90 average there, 100 average against Unterbuchner. Just looking at some of those averages, that is a, a stunning day's work from Gert de Vos. And he has a tour card, uh, and there are plenty of the good performances as well. I mean, just looking at the semi finals, likes of Vanden Bogard and another good run, Zorn Lurchbacker put in some excellent performances. Um, but probably one of the players of the day, discounting de Vos, of course, was, was Martin Schindler. Uh, and he put out one of the one of the biggest names of all early on. Um, well, not early on in the in the last 16, but look at look at some of these averages from Martin Schindler. 98 against Gillian Kuhorn, uh, 100.3 average, and it was a lot higher than that earlier in the match against Raymond van Barneveld, um, defeating Zoran Lurch back in the quarterfinals and the former tour card holder before eventually losing to Nanchez in the semis. Uh, I mentioned Raymond van Barneveld there, we've got to go over him uh, as I'm sure many of you will be interested in. 92, 96 and 101 before losing with a 101.3 average to Schindler in the last 16. Good work from Raymond van Barneveld, a couple of points on the board um, which will be, be useful if you can get a couple of points a day you'd like to think he'll get through on Seven or eight points is, is where you'd like to think the, the line will be in terms of tour cards. But a couple of points on the board. Throwing well, which is, is good to see after a couple of days rest. Um, after coming through the first block of players um, three or four days ago now. So a positive signs for Inman Barnabell despite losing in the last 16 to Martin Schindler. Now we'll cross over to the order of merit. Of course, it's obvious who the top players are going to be there. All the players that I've mentioned... Rusty Jake Rodriguez just sneaking in ahead of Raymond Van Barneveld as it happens. Um, Adam Gavlas just outside. Um, he had a huge average earlier in the day. But if you scroll down to the players on zero points, there's some big players. Christian Bunzer, Jeffrey de Graaf, René Idems, all zero points so far. Nico Kurtz down in 32nd place, joint 32nd place on zero points. It's a big shock and, and one of the players you would expect to come through. Not off to a good start still three days left. We'll now head over to the UK event of the day, Q School Finals, Map Centre. Um, and your player coming through is Kirk Shepherd, uh, another former tour card holder and a former World Championship finalist all those years ago, leading to John Part in the PDC World Championship final. But if we look at his run, pretty, pretty standard stuff throughout the day, pretty... Uh, Pretty solid, you have to say. Defeated Michael Barnard in the first round, one of the slower players in the tour, shall we say. Um, then coming through a last leg decider against Matty Dennett with an 89. Jonathan Wynn, Matt Jackson and Chas Barstow all defeated before reaching the semi-finals and edging out Martin Lukeman, who was 4-0 up in that game. Um, but Kirk Shepard just snatching it with a 91.9. 
and then 91.7 to defeat Jack Main in the final, who had a fantastic run, a couple of 90, 95, 96 averages in the earlier rounds for Jack Main, but it just seem, does seem like the nerves may have just got to him a little bit towards the end of that. Uh, some players I will run you through, John O'Shea had one of the biggest averages of the day, 104.7 against John Scott in the opening round, uh, before being defeated by Liam Meek. Um, who else have we got? I mean, Robert Thornton is a, is a name, comes in with a big, big reputation. He came from behind to defeat John Imry in the opening round uh, and then was pushed to a last leg decider by Jock Watt. Fellow Scotsman in the second, winning against Niall Cullerton and eventually losing out to Martin Hennigan in the last 16, but a couple of points on the board for Robert Thornton, which is crucial early on. Uh, just looking at the quarter-final lineup, lots of English players in there, you have to say. A couple of Irishmen in Martin Hennigan and Gavin Carlin. But John Worsley, another stand-up name, he made the semi-finals. Another former tour card holder uh, and a, a, good, a good foothold for him in the coming days. He'll want all the points he can get, so to get four or five on the, on the board nice and early is good for him. Even looking further down now, Andrew Gilding made the last 16. Jason Askew, a good player. Alan Souter, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have tipped to do well in this tournament. So we'll head over to the Order of Merit. Um, as you can see, Jack Main topping it currently, with the likes of Martin Lukeman and John Worsley just backing him up. Um, Robert Thornton's just in at the moment. Andrew Gilding is sitting just outside. We scroll down, players that haven't been able to pick up a point yet. Worth mentioning Fallon Sherrick. She secured an opening round victory over Scott Mitchell, uh, but then unfortunately couldn't back it up in the second round against Sean Fisher, losing out 6-1 in that one. But a, a good start to the day for Fallon, if nothing else. So some of the players that haven't picked up a point yet, I mean, Robert Collins, he's a, played on the tour before, it's Adrian Gray, Ryan Harrington. Um, there's just so many names though in the UKQ school, so many I could pick out. Keelan Kay, a very promising name. Jamie Lewis, not able to pick up a point just yet. Scott Mitchell, as you see there. Um, but but so many names. Uh, I'm not going to go through any more and bore you any more. You can head over to dart rank, dartsrankings.com if you'd want to check through the full um, list of the order of merits as they are now. Um, and you can head over to uh, dartconnect.com to check out the live scores as they come through, or at Tunks and Tales on Twitter if you prefer to keep up on social media. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we've got three more days to come of of UK and European Q school. Um, one player a day, the winner of each day coming through and claiming a tour card and the rest coming through those order of merit spots. We'll be here around the same time tomorrow, hopefully a little bit earlier. I need to get some sleep and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching.